Hello and welcome to the lecture series on monetary economics. In today's class, I'll be talking about a very important financial institution in India, which is popularly called as cooperative banks. So let's get started. An important segment of the organized sector of Indian banking system. I'm looking at the organized uh, structure or sector or segment of Indian banking system, which is represented by a group of financial institutions and these group uh, this this group itself is called as cooperative banks in india so here you can see that cooperative banks are a part of institutional credit or uh, it is a part of the organized structure of indian banking system so whenever i talked about indian banking system the two main broad classifications were the first was organized and the other was unorganized sort of a system and the uh, the cooperative banks are a part of organized segment uh, the other institutions which are a part of organized system are the commercial banks in india and therefore it deserves a lot of attention now since we know what are the cooperative banks in india let us look at from where these stemmed out because that is important they have not uh, they have not come into being from your regular banking uh, laws they have stemmed out from something called as the uh, the uh, the cooperative societies act which is there in the indian context and therefore they are called as cooperative because this is an important word which is cooperation they are called as cooperative banks because they are organized under under the provisions of the cooperative societies act of 1912 now i'm here mentioning the year 1912 year because in that year the amendment was made which 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 made a very drastic impact on on the term cooperative to be very precise but there was the first act was initiated in 1904 which talked about only primary credit societies and there was no mention of credit societies at the district or central level yeah district or central level that happened only in 1912 and therefore we are mentioning that act so therefore now we know what are cooperative banks yeah and we also know why they are called as cooperative banks there's another important aspect which you should be know, know uh, which should which you should know actually is that cooperative societies can be for both credit purposes as well as non credit purposes and whenever i'm talking about cooperative banks obviously i'm talking about those cooperative societies or credit societies to be very precise which are dealing with credit and therefore under the law meaning there by which law the cooperative societies act 1912 what it says is that the cooperative societies may be organized for credit or for other non credit purposes now whenever i'm looking at cooperative banks i'm looking at something called as the credit aspect of it and therefore the cooperative societies which are specially designed for credit purposes are being treated as cooperative banks in india so i hope the backdrop or the idea of this is pretty much clear let us now look at how the cooperative banking looks like when you take the background or when you take the birds eye view in the indian context so now the cooperative movement per se in india is a century old and it was specially designed or aimed at encouraging something called as thrift now thrift means i want to encourage savings and this was the main motive of the cooperative movement in india and also the development of certain segments of the society meaning thereby the agriculturalists the artisans the small entrepreneurs business persons etc so this was the backdrop on which a century old movement started and it culminated into something called as cooperative banking in india furthermore after realizing that there is exploitation of certain classes of workers individuals agriculturalists artisans and entrepreneurs by different sort of non institutional credit sources that is by money lenders or any other non institutional source of credit uh, merchant bankers and all of that traders the the idea of cooperative banking was being discussed to overcome this that is the exploitation of certain classes thereafter in 1904 the cooperative societies act was passed on the recommendation of frederick nicholson in 18 uh, 1899 and edward law 1901 so these are the two individuals who recommended that there should be a cooperative societies act in india and it was passed in 1904 there was an important 
aspect of this act as i told you in the previous segment that 1904 act allowed only primary credit societies that is the one which you look at now at the grassroots level that is the if you look at the structure we have the primary agricultural credit societies then we have the district or central cooperative banks and then we have the state cooperative at the apex so this is how the structure looks like so the 1904 paved way for this the primary credit societies and the act was amended in 1912 which i have noted here that is in 1912 the cooperative societies act was amended to incorporate district or central level cooperative banks so the second step came into being but the third important thing came in 1914 when the mclegan committee envisaged the three tier system which i am talking about here and it incorporated the the uh, the apex level institution which is the state cooperative bank so in the next class i hope this idea is pretty much clear it's a very birds eye view or very comprehensive idea of the background of cooperative banking in india but this is how it happened in the indian context that is it, it, the, there was a movement which was encouraging savings uh, which was aimed at encouraging savings as well as the development of certain segments it was also aimed at stopping or removing or reducing the exploitation uh, and and also then in 1904 an act was passed by the recommendation of two individuals from the british government and and thereafter we have certain amendments made to the uh, the, the act and thereafter in 1914 we have a three tier structure according to mclegan committee which recommended that there should be or they envisaged that there should be a three tier structure in the cooperative banking in india so i hope the idea is pretty much clear that there are certain institutions or specialized institutions which are a part of the organized sector and these institutions or financial institutions are collectively called as cooperative banks why calling them cooperative because they are under the purview of the cooperative societies act of 1912 or 1904 whichever you want to write and thereafter we have seen that cooperative societies can be for both credit as well as non credit purposes and this is how you can look at cooperative banking in india in the next class i'll be talking more about the structure of cooperative banking in india so please stay tuned thank you